All right, if you own a fitness studio, an independent gym, or really anything in the health and wellness space, you're gonna wanna watch this video because I'm gonna share with you some really incredible stuff that actually, for the most part, the top 5% of the people in the industry find basic, uh, but you'll be surprised how many people aren't even doing the basic stuff. So just so you guys know, my name is Mike Arce. I'm the CEO and founder of Loud Rumor. We're an ad agency and resource for fitness studios throughout the world from US to Australia, to Canada, to Hong Kong, you name it. Uh, I've worked now with over a thousand studios and uh, we've really been able to identify what the top 5% does very well and what everybody else does. And there is a big, big difference. So we actually decided we wanted to create a series of videos to help more people in the industry really explain that. That's really the mission that we're on here at Loud Rumor is to help people in the fitness studio space that are struggling. Uh, you'll be surprised how many studios actually close down. Eight out of 10 businesses fail within five years. You've heard that stat. However, in the fitness studio space, it's actually higher. The retention is also a problem. The stuff I'm gonna show you is also gonna help you with retention as well. But in, in a study done with over 56,000 studios, this is a stat given by MindBody at their conference, um, the average fitness studio is only able to retain 10% of their members for 12 months or longer. The best of the best, for only uh, 30%. So they're only able to retain 30% of the members for 12 months or longer. So there's a lot of basic stuff that we're just not getting right in the industry. And when I say we, I mean the fitness industry as a whole. But what I'm gonna be sharing with you today is top 5% stuff. And that's it. That's all you really wanna learn is what do the best of the best do? So I'm gonna copy anybody. I'm gonna copy the people that are getting A pluses, right? So uh, this is a basic level. And I wanted to start this way because I feel like before you move into an intermediate or advanced or anything like that, you're definitely gonna wanna get the basics down. If you get this stuff down, then you can move into the intermediate. Um, if you guys look on this post, you're gonna notice it actually has a link up there. So if you want us to notify you when we go live with the intermediate training, which is gonna be coming up in a few days, um, you can go ahead and click on that link. It'll open up a chat feature for us to just like let you know. And uh, we'll actually send you a message through Facebook letting you know that we're gonna go live and when we're gonna go live with the intermediate training. So if you guys like this, you definitely wanna get set up there. Also, some of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about here uh, is covered in this booklet. It's the Fitness Marketing Secrets booklet, how to destroy your competition in the fitness industry. It's a real small booklet. It's actually an hour read. It's very quick and easy. It's got 52 pages. It's like a deck of cards, but we cover a ton of stuff in here. Um, stuff like how to avoid obscurity, three things to never do in your marketing, how to steal your competitor's traffic. So if you guys feel like you're in a saturated area, you're gonna learn exactly how to benefit from that as opposed to suffer because of it. Also, uh, chatbots and how that really works and how you can use it. And then uh, with your marketing budget and how you should be looking at spending money and how you should not spend money because there's ways to really mess this up as well. And so I cover that as well. So that's Fitness Marketing Secrets. You go to fitnessmarketingsecrets.com. I'm giving the book away for free. So all you gotta do is go there and get your free copy. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. There's three major platforms that every fitness studio should be playing in no matter what. And there's a fourth one that acts as kind of like a variable depending on the fitness studio that you have. So I'll give you what the fourth one is right now. And that's AdWords. Now, you don't want to necessarily play with AdWords no matter what. Uh, there's ways to do it where yes, if you did want to use it no matter what, there's ways to do it, I'm gonna break that down. There's ways you definitely should not use it. And there's agencies out here charging to do it the wrong way because they don't even know how to do it the right way. I've done AdWords for a very long time. I spoke all over the country to talk about how to do AdWords the right way. I know what I'm talking about with here and I'm actually gonna break it down for you. So when you're going to run an AdWords campaign, uh, the way that everybody can use it is when you do wanna steal competitor traffic. So you can actually take what your competitors' names are and as long as they don't have a trademark associated with their name, which you can Google trademark names and then plug in your competitor's name and see if they have their name trademarked. But as long as they don't, which most small businesses don't, you can actually run ads to people that are um, your competitors in the area um, and then actually use a headline like, we're better than this company, here's why, right? And then in the description, use all the selling points that your studio has that they don't have, what your competitive advantage is. So let's say they don't offer um, weekend classes or they don't offer daycare and you do. They don't offer Sunday classes, you do. They don't, have, they don't offer midday classes, you do. Whatever it is, go ahead and put that in. Here's why. Even though, I'll give you a great example how I do this personally, but keep in mind this is what a lot of people do. Even though I've been going to my gym for years, whenever I do need to call them, 
I don't have their number stored on my phone. I should, but I don't. And so what I do is I just go to Google, I type in Mountainside Fitness, and then I call them. But what if all those members do that? What if half those members do that? And whenever they search for their studio, they'll see in there, in the, in the search results, that it's actually your company popping up and that you're better. And then the only things you're talking about are maybe the things that have actually been annoying them or ticking them off, right? So that's how you can use it as a general whole. Another way would be with display marketing, which this falls more into an intermediate or advanced. So we're not gonna cover that a lot today, but this is another way that you can use it as a whole. Okay, now in regards to the search marketing, the way that most agencies sell you to do it, but you shouldn't do it, is if people are searching certain keywords that you would wanna pop up for as a result. So if you own a yoga studio, for instance, or a Pilates studio, or if you own a bar studio, or spin, or a CrossFit, then doing a search campaign makes sense because people know what yoga is and some people are just looking for a yoga studio that they can go to. Some people are looking for Pilates near them. Some people are looking for spin or for CrossFit. And so when that's the case, those terms are pretty common, then yes, you can run keywords. That keyword planner, if you guys go to Google and Google keyword planner, once you set up your AdWords account, you'll have access to be able to type in like one or two keywords that you think people might search. And then it'll give you a whole bunch of ideas that are similar to that. And it'll tell you how many times those are searched in that particular area. So it's pretty cool, very powerful stuff. Um, a lot of people do know that, but again, today's basic stuff. But let's say you offer a, a type of fitness that's like a HIT training, right? Um, high interval training. Well, if you do that type of stuff, that person doesn't know that language. They don't know HIT. The average person just doesn't know HIT. Um, or if you guys are doing like plyometrics, calisthenics, or if you guys are doing uh, you know, the EMS or anything like that, a lot of people don't know how to search for that. So if you're gonna put in those keywords, you're not gonna get a lot of activity. If you're paying an agency to run it, the fee that you're paying for that agency is way too high. So the only thing I would do is swiping the competitor traffic and then display ads. But if you guys are a yoga studio, you are a Pilates studio, you are a bar studio or a spin or CrossFit, yes, definitely utilize AdWords. So they could actually work very well for you, um, but don't expect a ton of results. Um, but what you do get should be pretty quality because they actually made the decision to sit down and Google that themselves. So that's pretty good. Okay, now that we got the fourth one out of the way that's very circumstantial, let's get the three platforms that everybody should be using regardless of what you do, okay? So that is number one, Facebook, right behind it, Instagram, and then YouTube. And I wanna set expectations of what you'll get with each one so that you're very clear as to what you should know and, and what you should expect from these guys. So number one, Facebook, expect high volume. Really targeted people. Um, Instagram, you're not gonna get as high of a volume, but you're gonna get around the same cost per lead generally, in some cases, maybe even better. And I'm gonna break down how to run ads here as well. For YouTube, this is more of a branding thing. So I don't want you guys to go, man, I spent $400 here, and then I spent $400 here, and I actually got way more leads here. I'm gonna stop doing YouTube, I'm gonna double up on Facebook. Well, you can, and you're definitely gonna get more instant results, but YouTube is actually helping you with long-term, building that brand within that community. Always remember this, um, you guys are mostly, as fitness studios, and wellness companies, brick and mortar, that kind of deal, you guys are mainly targeting people inside a five to seven mile radius, right? So. How can we make it so that there's nobody within five to seven miles that you know, doesn't know who we are, what we do, where we do it, you know, all that stuff. All that should be very clear. If, if people in your area know companies like Nike and Apple and all that, that's great. That means they have the ability to remember brands that they like. Now, how can we make it so that we're one of those brands as well? And so that comes with a lot of content and YouTube is one of the best places to do it because it's affordable. So before we dive into how to use Facebook and Instagram appropriately, which I'm gonna do, I now wanna break down YouTube and why you should be looking at this platform as like this gold nugget and, and uh, also this very easy win to adopt right away because I'll tell you right now, most of your competition isn't doing this. Number one, because they don't understand it. And number two, because they, they haven't even thought about it. It's, it. They haven't seen their competition on it, right? If the, as soon as they start seeing their competitors on here, I promise you they're gonna wanna start doing it. So once you do this, within a few months, you're gonna notice your comp one of your competitors is gonna do it too. But let me tell you why it's crazy for you not to do YouTube ads.
So number one um, is the way that they price it out, the, the pricing and the whole method of it. So I want you to imagine you've been on YouTube and you know when you go to watch a video, I don't care what video you want to watch, whether it's how to make napkin animals or um, you know how to make your uh, quiche or a Michael Jordan highlight reel, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what you Google because it can be based around, I want to target women between 25 to 55 that live within three to five miles of my studio that like yoga, right? Let's say your yoga studio or like Pilates or like fitness or, or have been searching videos similar to losing weight, dieting, like stuff that would hint to you that they're ready for a life change physically and, and health wise, right? So now you go, okay, I want to target those people. So whatever videos they watch now is not so relevant. Um, it's what they've been watching and who they are and where they are. So now you've seen those videos. You're like, all right, I want to Google Michael Jordan highlight reel. I can't wait to see it. And then you see an ad that pops up. And then after about a five second countdown, you'll notice a little option that says skip ad. You can go ahead and skip ad right there. Now here's the beauty of it. Remember, number one, we can target. I can say I only want to go after these types of people that have been searching this type of stuff or visited these types of channels, right? These specific channels or these specific videos, you can do that as well, okay? At a local level, getting that granular is not really that great of an idea. Um, you really want to go more for categories. If you guys were going global or even national or regional, then maybe, um, but a five to seven mile radius targeting people that watch spe specific videos or channels, that's going to lower your like reach. So more go over categories. And we'll explain that more in an intermediate or advanced. So again, for those of you guys just tuning in, if you go to the link above, we're going to be doing another training that's more of an intermediate or an advanced. This is beginner. And I'm going to be breaking that kind of stuff down as well. So, all right. So number one, not only can you target exactly who you want, but then you got the way that it's actually charged. So you only pay when you're doing in-stream ads on YouTube, which is what I highly recommend you guys do. You only pay for true views. Now here's what a true view is. Let's say Joan, mother of three in her early to mid thirties that lives two miles away from your studio and has been Googling yoga videos or Pilates videos and how to lose weight and dieting and all that's perfect candidate, right? So now she sees your ad pop up and she gets that ticker five, four, three, two, one. And then she can skip ad. Perfect. Right? Great. Well, here's the thing. If she does that, you don't pay. You just got in front of her for free. In fact, you don't pay unless that girl, actually watches 30 seconds of your video or more. Meaning if you, if she watches 29 seconds of your video and then skips, does it cost you a penny? It's a hundred percent free. Is that crazy? So uh, let me show you this. 94%, the stat that we just read, I think it was on digital marketer, 94% of these YouTube ads get skipped. And if you could think about how you watch ads on YouTube, I would bet you would say you skip 94% or greater of the ads as well. Now, at first you may go, well, that's not that good. Well, let me tell you why it is good. So let's say you're targeting these people, okay? And you're able to get 10,000 impressions, meaning they saw your ad. Doesn't mean anything else happened. They just saw your ad, okay? What data tells us is that 94% of these impressions are gonna be skipped, meaning 9,400 of those views are gonna be 100% free. 100% free. You are literally getting in front of these people at no cost to your business. Zero. Now, that means we'll still have about 600 people that either A, watched 30 seconds of my video or longer, or B, clicked through to learn more about whatever offer I'm talking about in the video. Now, out of the 600, what we've noticed here, it costs about 10 to 20 cents per true view. Now, if you're doing the math, that whole thing cost 60 to 120 bucks to get in front of 10,000. I should say, get your ad seen 10,000 times by targeted people within your area that have recently had certain interests that your, pro your company can solve the problem for. You'll have 10,000 people see it. You'll have 600 people raise their hands, say, I want to watch more or learn more, 60 to $120. My guess is that you spent 60 to $120 in a uh, less intelligent way over the last two, three months. And uh, there's a better way to do it. And this right here is just an easy win. The cool thing about this too, is you can also apply retargeting strategy to it. Meaning if let's say this person here watches this video for a certain amount of time, then she'll next time she logs in, 
she'll be shown another video of yours. And then the next time, it'll be another video of yours, and she won't see the other ones. You could set it up that way. So let's say the first video is about your why and you know why your studio is so awesome, why it's becoming the most popular place to work out in the city. And then the next video, maybe you give some tips. Maybe the next video, maybe you give some more tips, and now they start getting addicted to your content. They start watching. And the last video is a bunch of testimonials and a compilation of how you've been helping people. So now you squash all their limiting beliefs. They know that you can actually help them, and now they want to learn more about you. So you can take people through a funnel. Again, this is more of a intermediate, intermediate or advanced style of marketing. Let's get to the basics. Again, if you guys want to be notified when the next intermediate training is, where we go over that kind of stuff, just go to the link above in the copy, click on it, it'll open up a message, and we'll actually make sure you're notified when we do that training so you can watch that one too. So overall, I'm sure you guys are looking right now and saying, man, $60 to $120, that's nuts. And that's to get 10,000 impressions. What if I only wanted 1,000 or 5,000? Would it cost me a lot less? Yeah, like 15 bucks, right? It's very, very affordable, and your competition's not doing it because they're lazy and they haven't spent the time even looking at how their business can leverage this type of advertising. So go ahead and get there first, beat them to the punch, and steal all the attention. You should be uh, thieves of attention in your community so everybody knows who you are, and the more they pay attention to you, the less they pay attention to your competition. Okay. So now Facebook and Instagram. I want to go through these next, and keep in mind these are um, you know really one and the same. Um, in fact, Facebook bought Instagram for those of you that don't know, and Google actually bought YouTube for those of you guys that don't know. So a lot of the data for AdWords and YouTube is shared, and you can use all the same platforms. In fact, you do use the same platform. Same thing with Facebook and Instagram. You run Instagram ads inside of the Facebook platform when you're doing it through Ads Manager. Okay, let's keep it basic, and let's really just go through strategy stuff, and then intermediate and advanced, we can go ahead and go through the how. But right now, I want you to know the what and the why, because I feel like so many fitness studios are just suffering and they're failing in this stuff, and it's because they're either not doing it or they're doing the right thing wrong. One of those two things. So we're gonna clear all that up today. All right, so with Facebook and Instagram, um, the, th the thing that kills most businesses is the thing that most businesses love about Facebook. The coolest thing about Facebook ads is actually the Achilles heel to most local businesses. And that's the ability to target. So let me explain what I mean. When you go on Facebook and Instagram, you go, man, I can, I can target by gender, I can target by age, I can target by location, um, then I can also target by interests, I can tar target by uh, behaviors and buying patterns and all these things, and yes, 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 and here's a problem. You may have, let's say, uh, one million people in your area. And you go, okay, I wanna target genders. Okay, now we're down to 500,000. Okay, now I wanna target age. Okay, now we're down to about 100,000. Now I wanna target people that have uh, this type of behavior. Okay, now we're down to 15,000. That also make this much money. Okay, now we're down to this 2,000. And then you keep going, and the next thing you know, you got like three people that could possibly see your ad. And you're just not gonna grow your business this way. So really, what we recommend is avoid as a local business. You're not a global, you're not a national business. You know, gotta know your game and the game that you gotta play. You're in a different arena than Coca-Cola or Nike that really can use almost every level of targeting. For you guys, you wanna stick to really just location. Now, as far as how far of a radius, that really depends on you and your city and you gotta understand where you live. So I'll give you an example. Manhattan, we usually don't go more than one mile. People walk a lot in Manhattan, it's saturated, and people build up in Manhattan, not out, right? That's why there's so much traffic. Um, but if you go to a place like Tucson, Arizona, um, especially on the outskirts of it, you may notice that you may, ha you may be able to go eight, nine, 10 miles because where you are, there aren't a ton of options for what you do, and so you can stretch out a little further. So you've really gotta know your area. Generally, what we see is a five mile radius is a really good reach, okay? Then you wanna go for gender. Okay, now this is where a lot of people mess up, and I I'm challenging you to get outside of your way of thinking for a second. The average person says, I want to target men and female. Even when I tell them, you really just want to target females. And the reason is because female uh, clicks and costs come in at four times, uh, four times less than men. That means if you spent, uh, as an example, a certain amount of money to generate a hundred leads and just targeted women, if you spent that on just men, you'd only get 25 for the same budget. Okay, so you get four times the amount of leads for the budget if you just target women versus if you just target men. And if you combine the two, obviously you're gonna get an average of the two, so maybe you meet somewhere around 50 or 60, right? Um, so we like targeting women. Another thing that we like about that as well is that we've noticed that 
females are more likely to bring in spouses, coworkers, and friends than males are, and they also have a longer lifetime customer value. So at the end of the day, you're still gonna be able to bring in the males because females are more likely to bring in their spouses and friends. And so um, understand that at the end of the day, your bank doesn't care if your money came from men or women. Your bank does not care. Your employees don't care if their paycheck was made up of men or women's wallets. They don't care. They just need to get paid and so do your bills and you wanna grow your business. And I promise you, as you're building it up, it's gonna be very, very difficult for you not to, to be able to screen out just, you know, so you just get women in. So at the end of the day, you can do that. Now, if you do wanna focus on males, you can just understand the cost increase. Same thing goes on Instagram. These two are the same. Okay, and then as far as age goes, what we've noticed, this female, um, what we've noticed for age, 25 to 55 seems to be the best range. Now, at the end of the day, also know your area. If you live in Sun City, Arizona, if that's where your studio is, well, you're probably not going to get a lot of 25-year-olds, and you probably have a lot of 16, 65-year-olds that are looking for a place to work out as well. So you may stretch it out. If your uh, demographic already, the bulk of your business, seems to be a lot of elderly or young, then maybe it's a good idea to stay more on this side of the bracket or on that side of the bracket. But I would say eight out of 10 studios we work with, out of the thousand and plus, you know, we're looking at 25 to 55 is the age group. And as far as the rest of the targeting, that's it. That's where it ends. So don't feel like you have to use everything that Facebook gives you. You know, you're not Coca-Cola, you're not Apple, you're not Nike, you're not Harley, where you've got this huge pool of people to work with. You got five to seven miles. <coughs> Let the ads fil filter themselves. Okay. So now that you've got this down for both, now you really want to work on the actual process, what the funnel looks like. Okay. So you want to start with uh, two different campaign objectives. Now, if you've never logged into Facebook and you've never created a, a business manager in Facebook, you, you, you've never gone into ads and actually started running an ad, well then just go to Google and type in how to create my ads account in Facebook. I mean, that part's simple. You don't need me for that. All you've got to do is five minutes of homework to find the link that has a step-by-step -step process. Trust me, Facebook wants you and every small business to run ads. So they create that content for you and they made it simple. All you got to do is get in. So once you get in there, there's three different campaign objectives that re we really like to work with. The first one is conversion. What that means when Facebook says conversions is we are going to create a campaign where the objective is to get people to give you their information in exchange for that offer, okay? Another one is traffic. Now you can play around and test these and see which one works better for you in your area, okay? Traffic is our objective is to get people to see the ad and click on the link. That's the objective. And then the next one that we really like as well is video views. This is, the objective is we are targeting the objective of getting as many people as possible to watch our videos. Now, why does this play a role? Well, because it's gonna take these two things and combine them, right? Your targeting and then your objective. So Facebook knows if let's say I'm the type of person that actually does click through and fills out forms, that seems to be my behavior and pattern here. Well, Facebook's gonna show me an ad in a campaign objective like that more than they would show it to a person that really never does that. Same thing, if I'm a clicker, I click on stuff, it's gonna show me an ad more than somebody that doesn't. And if I'm the type of person that spends time watching videos on YouTube or on Facebook, then it's gonna show me and serve me the ad more than it will somebody that really just mostly breezes right past that. So this is important because depending on what you're doing and what the, what the focus of your ad is, um, you may wanna make sure you're targeting people for that. So if you're, if you're creating a video, um, and the goal is to get people to just watch your video so they can start getting branded with your company, really start knowing you in your area, in your community, then video views are great and you can actually retarget people that watch certain percentages. Now, this is gonna be more in the intermediate training, but just so you know what we're gonna cover, you can actually say, anybody that watched 10 seconds of my video or longer, I want you to show them this now. Anybody that watched 25% or 50% or 95% or 100%, I want you to do this now. Now, that's not basic, so we're gonna cover that in the intermediate training, not this one. So remember, go up to the link in the copy. If you want me to notify you when I go live for the intermediate training, just go there and I'll get you notified. Also, as a reminder for those of you that are just logging in now, um, in this book, I actually go through the entire strategy step-by-step -step on how you can actually um, find people, help them collect all their stuff, and then target. And th this is fitnessmarketingsecrets.com. You get the book for free.
Okay, so <clears throat> these are the different campaigns. Now, you want to go ahead and create an ad for them. And you'll see as you get set up in Facebook, for those of you guys that are new and haven't ever set, set up one before, don't worry. The technical stuff you'll learn in the step-by-step -step stuff. I'm right now, I'm skipping you guys, knowing that you can always come back to use the strategy. And for the people that already have ads running, but it's not working for them, which has pretty much most people, this is a strategy to use. Okay, number one, you wanna make sure that you're, uh, when you're creating your ads, you always wanna test at least two different versions of your ad. Maybe one of them is an image, maybe another one is a video. Maybe you've got two different images, maybe you've got two different videos, okay? You can even test a third, a fourth, a fifth if you like as well. It really depends on what your budget is. If you have a big enough budget, then testing two, three, four, five, six things makes a lot of sense. But if you guys have a smaller budget, well, you're not gonna have enough activity on each one in order to really determine like what's real and what's not real. So you wanna have enough data, right? If I, if I uh, let's say, shoot a basketball three times, that's not enough for you to know if I'm a good shooter or not. I could have missed all three and actually be a really good shooter. I just missed these three. I could have also made all three and I actually suck, but you guys think I'm really good because I just made these three. If you watch me shoot a hundred or more, you're gonna really get a more realized understanding of how good or bad I am as a shooter. Same thing goes for your ads. You're gonna have a much better understanding as to how good or bad this ad is versus this ad as you have more data and you can realize um, which, one's, which one's actually the most effective. Um, okay, now one thing that's important when you are testing different versions of your ads, you don't wanna test everything different. You wanna test one variable at a time. So for example, when you look at an ad, I'm gonna draw an ad over here. When you look at an ad, there's different pieces to your ad. Uh, number one is going to be the text right up at the top, right, your, your, your copy. Okay, and so here is one area that you can test. Another is the actual visual, right, the creative, which will be either a video, it'll be uh, an image, it'll be a carousel. You get to pick that when you're creating the ad. You'll see when you're in there. And then you've got the headline right there. You've got the news feed, or not the news feed, sorry, the, uh, the description. And then you've got the call to action, which is the button like learn more, watch more, take off or something like that, right? So you've got these different areas. You don't want these two ads to have different things in all these areas. A real true A-B test, which is what it's called, is when you are testing one variable at a time. So typically we like to test the creative first, meaning you would create two of these ads, they'll be identical, Everything written up here is identical. The headline's identical. The description's identical. The call to action's identical. The only thing that's different is the creative. Now that you know which creative works better, because that's the only variable, right? Now you know which creative works better. Now in the next A-B test, you could drop the loser and you can go ahead and test the next thing. Maybe it's the copy up top, which is typically the next place to go. Then you could test the offer. You could test the headline. You could test the, uh, the, the call to action. But just remember, you don't wanna test more than one variable at a time, otherwise you're not gonna know which one is the one that actually made the difference. Now, and sometimes you'll notice you'll hit a home run right off the bat, and every test you make after is not as effective, very rare. Um, but sometimes, and most times, you're gonna notice you're gonna have to do several tests before you really find something that works well. That's why people hire agencies like ours, is to do this, but this stuff you could do yourself. It's just, do you have the time to do it or not? If you do, great, this is the style, right? This is the strategy. Do you rather delegate it to a team that's the best in the entire world? Well, then you call us, that's what we do. Okay, so now you get the two different ads up. Now, after that, you wanna make sure that you know where you're taking them to next. Never, ever, ever, I want you to write this down really big on your, on your monitor, so just tape it up there so you never do it, because this is what rookies do, and you don't wanna be a rookie. This is it, this is the end of your rookie days. Never send traffic to a website always send it to a landing page. If you guys don't know what a landing page is, it's basically a one page site that just you can create very quickly and easy without any design skills whatsoever, no coding skills whatsoever. I don't know how to do either of those two things well at all. And I create landing, I've created probably hundreds of landing pages by now, personally. Then I got my team that's created thousands of them. So if you guys don't know how to create a landing page, you do that in WordPress, you hear, just go to clickfunnelspromo.com, clickfunnelspromo.com, and you can actually get it's like a full 14-day full trial to the tool that we use to run literally thousands and thousands of campaigns to landing pages that are built in here. It's super cheap. I can't remember what it costs, but it's not even 100 bucks. 
and you have access to like everything. It's drag and drop and it's amazing. So clickfunnelspromo.com, you get a 14 day trial and you're literally using the tool that we use. The cool thing about it is when you're creating this landing page, you can do the same thing you do for your ad, right? So we not only A-B test the two different ads to see what gets people to click more, right? Because this is they're on their feed and then they see this. Well, which one is getting more people to click? This one, great, that's the winning ad. But now once they click, they land on a landing page. And here, you can actually, and that's one thing I like about the ClickFunnels promo as well, is you can actually create two versions of a landing page and A-B test your landing pages. And you can see which one takes that traffic and out of the two, which one converts most of it, right? Now you're making the most out of your budget and that's really what you wanna do. So you can say, man, on this landing page, I wanna include a button that says, get your free week. The other one maybe has, you know, claim your free offer today. Maybe on this one we have a video, maybe this one we don't have a video. Maybe this one we have testimonials to kick things off, maybe that one we don't. Whatever it is, no matter what, just like the other one, test one variable at a time, never more than one. Otherwise, you're not gonna know what works. But great tools like click, uh, clickfunnelspromo.com offers it and you can really just run it here. Now, when you're running your landing page, this is super important. And same thing with your ad. These are, this is one thing that, you know, to us it's basic, but you know, common sense is not so common to people that just haven't studied. So when you're making this sale, you have to understand what you're selling and what you're not selling. In the ad, you're not selling your studio. You're not selling all the benefits of your studio and why you're amazing and why everyone should pay you and why you should work out here for the rest of your life. You don't wanna do that, okay? Really all you're selling is the offer. Let's say it's a free week pass, which by the way, that is the number one offer that our top 5% uses. Anybody watching that says, I don't like giving stuff away for free because it devalues our service, hasn't actually tested how amazing this is, hasn't researched how amazing it is because their top 5% says, might just get people in the door my sales team is gonna do the rest. We know what we're doing, we're great at what we do. You wanna send us tire kickers, great. I'll take all the tire kickers you want because I don't care, I know everybody wants one thing. Everybody that steps foot in here wants one thing. They wanna be in better shape than they currently are. I know that for a fact. All I gotta do is sell them. Nobody walks into a fitness studio for a trial and says, you know what, I'm actually looking to be in worse shape. Actually, where I'm at is perfect. I hope to never get better than this. No one says that, we know that, right? So at the end of the day, you just gotta get your sales game up. And this gets more volume in the door than anything else. A free week with a $500 budget on average generates 120 leads per month. Whereas the best offer, paid offer, which is 30 for 30, what we've noticed, generates on average 42 leads per month. So you're really looking at a huge difference. Now is one higher quality, meaning it's a little further down the funnel? Yeah, potentially. But at the end of the day, I got more people I can follow up with. I got more people that I can retarget to. I have more people that I can continue to mushroom and build this business around. And that's really the idea. So uh, that's the suggestion. You guys do what you like. I'm just giving you the data of thousands of studios that we work with and what the best of the best actually do and how they grow. Okay, so all you're really looking to do is sell the offer. Then when they land on the landing page, you're reselling the offer harder. So now you're adding more in it. Maybe you guys offer measurements. Maybe you guys offer uh, free water bottles. Maybe you guys offer a free consultation for nutrition. Maybe you guys do body fat testing, um, whatever it is, right? Whatever comes with your free trial or your offer, this is your chance on the landing page to sell that even harder, right? And that's all you're selling. When they get into your studio, that's where you're selling a membership. If you sell too fast here, you're gonna lose them. It's like if a person cold calls you, right? Uh, granted, cold calling you, you guys, most of you guys are probably hanging up pretty quickly already, but my bet is that you're very likely to hang up on a person that says, hey, I just wanted to give you a call, I really want you to buy our product and here's why, versus, Hey, I'm so sorry, I know I'm calling you, but is there any way you just give me 30 seconds? All I need is 30 seconds, and if you don't like, you can hang up on me, right? You're more likely to buy the 30 seconds for free than you are this product that quickly. But then once you get them to say yes in 30 seconds, a good cold caller knows, now I'm gonna say, okay, can I have 10 more minutes of your time? And then can I show you a demo? Can I show you how we do what we do? And then you sell the big product. So they sell in appropriate pieces. When you're doing advertising, advertising doesn't make sales. Advertising creates opportunities for sales departments. Sales make sales. And then ongoing customer service retains sales and upsells and continues selling that person in. Okay, so now once they go ahead and get to the landing page, what's next? Okay, they see this thing. Yes, give me your first name, last name, email, and phone number for the offer. Now here's one thing I'll tell you too. Most 
gurus will tell you, don't ask for the last name and the phone number. Because if you ask for the last name and phone number, your, reten your, your conversion rates are going to drop. Yes, they will. However, has anybody ever researched by how much? Here, let me tell you what it is. It's about 10% more leads. If you just get their first name and their email versus me, I get their first name, last name, email, and phone number, you will get about 10% more leads than me. Now, let me ask you this question. Would you rather have 100 leads where you just get the first name and email, or would you rather have 90 leads where you also get the last name and their phone number to follow up and text and all that? My guess is if you're smart is you'd rather have 90 leads with all that info. So with that being said, forget about that and ask for all four things. Once they fill out that form, you want them to go to a second landing page in the funnel. The cool thing about ClickFunnelsPromo.com is that when you actually fill out that form, automatically you can make it so the next page is the one you created next. It's automatically in that funnel. Now on this thank you page, you wanna have what's called a bonus offer. So think about the, the, the most infomercials that you've ever seen, right? At the end of it, they got you excited about it, but wait, there's more, right? And that's what gets you to really take action. If you were on the fence about it, maybe that extra set of steak knives for free, if you take advantage of it now, will get you to do it, right? This wasn't done by accident or everyone's just not copying everyone because it looks like it's cool. No, it looks cheesy, but they copy it because it works. The bonus offer works. So now you can say, let's say it's a free week. Hey, go ahead and give us a call before we call you and we'll throw in an extra free week plus a free week for a friend or we'll throw in a free yoga mat if you come in for, um, you know, if you call in, call in and schedule your first class today, whatever you want to do. Offer some sort of a bonus offer in order to incentivize them to take action. Okay, so far, this is the basic stuff. And for some of you guys that are going basic, that seems kind of crazy and a little advanced. I'm not doing any of that right now. That's okay. This stuff is actually easy, but don't feel bad if you think it's hard. It's easy. And the reason I tell you it's easy is because thousands of people are doing this, right? Very few people have found a way to live on Mars. That's hard. Cause that's never, no one can figure that out. That's hard. But thousands of people that are no better than you are doing this. That means this is easy. You know, what's easier though, not learning how to do this. Okay. So this is easy. You guys can learn this stuff, but I wanted you guys to understand the strategy because just like dieting, I think the number one reason people stop dieting is because they only understand the rules, but they don't understand the what and the why. Meaning for example, um, people may go to uh, Atkins diet or they may go to paleo diet and they know the rules, but they don't really understand the science behind what it's doing for their body or to their body. Therefore, if it's not working right away, or therefore if another thing pops up, they just jump ship to the next thing and then they keep diet hopping over and over. The same thing goes with advertising and marketing. I see so many people jump from one thing to another and the reason is because they really don't understand it and the strategy. This is it. So I wanted to create a what and a why for you guys so you guys can see it. And then in the next training, I'm going to go through it a little deeper. I'm actually going to go through examples of like what should be in the ad and the ad copy, the images, um, what the call to action should look like. Same thing with the landing page, like what makes a good landing page, what makes a bad landing page. Same thing with the bonus offer. Um, I'm going to break this down for you in the retargeting and all that. So that's going to be more in the intermediate training. So if you guys want to watch that too, just go to the link in the copy and you'll notice there's a link right there. Click on that. It'll open up a chat message and we'll be able to actually get you set up so you get notified when I do the next live one. Also, if you guys haven't gotten this yet, I'm telling you, this is the best thing you'll never have to pay for, ever. It's a free booklet that I created for you guys. I want, my goal is every fitness studio in the world has this on their desk because it's like kind of like a little mini Bible to marketing and how to do it right and how to stay away from the dumb stuff that everyone's doing and worse, everyone's copying that same dumb stuff and everyone's failing because of it. And when I say failing, I know not everyone's closing down, but people are remaining stagnant. They're not growing. It's just like they're on this treadmill. To me, that is failing because you're not in a business to stay static. You're in a business to grow and constantly grow and create an environment for your employees to grow in their careers. And if you're not doing that, you're failing. So this book is great. I worked real hard to make sure I get the right material in front of you. I printed these out. All you gotta do is go to fitnessmarketingsecrets.com, get your free copy there while we have them because we only printed a certain amount. We, didn't, we don't have like an unlimited warehouse. We have like bottomless books. We've got a certain amount. We're giving away for free and I hope that you guys can get this for free while we're, do, while we're giving it away for free. Fitnessmarketingsecrets.com. And then uh, click on the link above. I'll get you set up for the intermediate training. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments below.
and I'd love to help you out with that as well. You can send a message to us. And if you want to learn what it takes to work with the number one absolute hands down best agency in the world for fitness and wellness, go to loudrumor.com, set up with a call, and I'll show you how to get it done like the top 5% do. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next training.